So I was thinking about this the other day. It's like, why work so hard when we can just critique the, the work of very hardworking, much more knowledgeable people? So we're going to do that today. Uh, we are reacting to Lance Zerline's Mock Draft 2.0, uh, the Vikings' two first-round picks. Of course, I have some thoughts. Now, get this out of the way first. So Lance Zerline, I respect his work. He's done a lot of great stuff uh, coming up through the game. I believe he works in Houston. Yeah, so obviously a guy who uh, has a lot more clout and puts on a ton, a lot more work and is much uh, more well-respected. But... You know, it, just like everything with, with mock drafts and the draft, everything is subjective. Like, uh, like all of us uh, fans stuck to a bar stool, like we're, we're going to be roasting uh, the selections of a very highly paid, very highly uh, intelligent, well, someone intelligent, uh, 32 decision makers coming up uh, in a month. So yeah, it is what it is. That, that's what makes it fun because uh, the, the uh, opinions uh, on mock drafts are, are like assholes. Everyone has one. It's great. So let's get into this. First off, so consensus consensus is uh, Vikings needs in the draft are cornerback, wide receiver, and offensive tackle, right? And the Vikings go none of them uh, in round one in, in Lance's uh, thing here. And yes, it is a deep cornerback class. Yes, it is a deep wide receiver class. And of course, the Vikings uh, could find a help elsewhere uh, in this draft. But I mean, just like everything, uh, there there are tiers, uh, there are stratas, and there are certain levels on cornerback and wide receiver that You'd much rather have in the first round as opposed to finding a uh, facsimile in the second, third, fourth uh, round, etc. So sometimes th there just is value even at deep positions that you just can't pass up, right? So uh, at first pick, 22 overall. So he goes uh, Gross Matos, the edge rusher from uh, Penn State. Now, I, I like him. I'm not completely over the moon for him. Yes, this is sort of a supply and demand thing. This is not an overly great edge class. Uh, but I, I think, you know, we discussed this earlier in the week. I, I think... All the national people are hung up on Everson Griffin, where it's like, well, the guy replaced Everson, 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 Everson. Even though, uh, for me, it, it sucked that uh, the Vikings uh, consciously uncoupled. They socially distanced themselves from uh, Everson. But I understood it, as well as, I mean, people don't know about Afadi Odenimbo. Like, I, I actually think that Afadi, as a full-time starter, will have double-digit sacks. I think he will have uh, a really great season coming up. So I, I think, um, you know, national people, I, again, I empathize with them because they have to cover 32 teams and, and us here, we, we can just take pot shots because we're uh, in depth, fully needing uh, in, in uh, one team. So I actually would be okay if they just passed on edge uh, early on, uh, as well as I, I like Anthony Zell. Frankly, I, I really do like Anthony Zell as well. I mean, uh, a guy who's a couple seasons removed from having seven and a half sacks as a starter in this league, I, I think he brings a lot to the table. So, I mean, for me, uh, you know, we'll get into you know, who would have preferred at, at these picks, et cetera, uh, in a sec. So 25. Uh, go with Ross Blacklock, uh, the defensive tackle out of TCU. Now, I think he is great. I think he's an interior monster. It, it will give the Vikings uh, interior pressure that they haven't really had since Sheldon Richardson. But also, you know, I'll throw out the caveat that if the Vikings are moving to a 3-4, which we haven't, you know, there is no confirmation on it. In fact, Zimmer won't, won't, Zimmer probably won't even say, oh, are you moving to a 3-4? Well, well, you know, just see what is out there, the multiple fronts. And, um, like, even if they just rock out week one, full-on 3-4, like old school uh, Bill Belichick 3-4. And Zimmer will be like, yeah, what do you, what do, you do? But if, if they are moving to a 3 4, it is less emphasis and emphasis on the right syllable uh, with the three tech, uh, which Blacklock is. But I mean, certainly there's going to be spots in sub packages, uh, but also it's a much uh, higher need and higher premium on five techs. Now, uh, that could bring back uh, gross models because I actually think that his natural position in the NFL could be a, a five tech in a 3 4 uh, defensive end in a 3 4 scheme. So maybe that brings it all back full circle. But, I, I, I mean, it, it does make a lot of sense. Of course, the Vikings you know, losing uh, Lindball Joseph, uh, the Vikings not, never really replacing Sheldon Richardson. I mean, they do need some defensive tackle help. So, I mean, the Blacklock pick does make a lot of sense. I mean, just like, I mean, overall, um, the Gross Manos pick does make a lot of sense as well. But I think uh, for what the Vikings are really looking for in this draft, maybe, maybe not. As well as, I mean, people sleep in Armand Watts. I mean, Vikings fans know. Vikings fans know that Armand Watts, if they give him the time of day, will be a beast, will be an absolute stud. Plus, he's got great versatility. He could play every single position on the defensive line in a 3-4 or a 4-3. He really could. Um, so, I mean, nationally, again, edge, defensive tackle, it, it does make a lot of sense. It's fine. Uh, but for me, just looking through, uh, so in this draft, four of the top 
uh, uh, you know, big uh, five, big six tackles are, are gone. So Wills, Wirfs, Thomas Becton, they all gone, right? So that does leave Josh Jones. That does leave uh, Austin Jackson, who go 26 and 27 respectively. Now, uh, one, one of my primary goals in this draft, since it is pretty top heavy at tackle, I want to come away with one of the top tackles, specifically uh, a left tackle of the future. So the fact that Josh Jones is still sitting there chilling, the fact that Austin Jackson is still sitting there chilling, I mean, that would be tough to pass up. And Lance obviously does see them as first round talent since they have them go right behind the Vikings picks respectively. So I would have gone with Jones or Jackson, probably Jones uh, at 22 or 25. Uh, and then also you look at wide receivers. So Judy Ruggs, Lamb and Jefferson are off the board. Now we've talked about, we like Jefferson, but I feel like he would be a little bit skill redundant with Thielen since it works out of the slot. But of course, you know, Judy Ruggs, Lamb, you know, the big three. They're off the board. And I would have preferred Mims uh, at, at 24. I really would have. Uh, because I, I believe this came out because uh, this came out on March 20th. So I believe this was out before uh, the Saints signed Emmanuel Sanders. So do they really have a big need of wide receiver? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but also, I mean, I would have liked Mims in, in this grouping uh, for the Vikings. I, frankly, I would have mind Jalen Rieger, who ends up going to the Packers at 30, who which is extremely annoying to me. Because, uh, I mean, that's just uh, another great explosive talent for the corpse of Aaron Rodgers to try and arm punt to. Uh, as well as, I mean, T. Higgins. Uh, T. Higgins uh, would not would have and should have been uh, in this first-round mix. But also, um, I, I will note an important caveat here is that this, even though this did come out on March 20th, uh, which is four days after the Stephon Diggs trade, this may have already been filed. So uh, maybe he, are, he already posted this editor. So maybe the Vikings didn't have that glaring need at wide receiver. Uh, and also... Um, I believe he mentions anything about Stefan Diggs. So I, I will you know, take that with a grain of salt there. So maybe um, yeah, if this was after the Stefan Diggs trade, uh, then maybe he would have adjusted the picks, but who, who really knows. Uh, but also with cornerbacks. So uh, Akuda, Henderson, A.J. Terrell are off the board. Uh, A.J. Terrell going before the Vikings, I, I'm certainly okay with that because I, I don't necessarily see him uh, as one, one of the top-tier cornerbacks. But also, I mean, Jeff Gladney. Uh, ends up going to the Titans at 29. Uh, would have loved him uh, as well as, I mean, no Christian Fulton. No Christian Fulton in the first round, uh, which is for sure interesting. I, I believe in his talent. I, I think he is pretty clearly cornerback three in this class. So for me, I, I probably would have gone Josh, uh, Josh Jones uh, at 22 and then um, – Probably would have gone with a cornerback at 25, either Christian Fulton or Jeff Gladney. And yeah, we talked to up the wide receivers, but you know, I, I do. I mean, I mean, it is a game of musical chairs. Only two of the positions can uh, get the grease there. So uh, you would have gone a wide receiver a little bit later on, but I don't know. Like I, I overall, I wouldn't be upset uh, if the Vikings uh, came out this way because, like we said, edge is one of the thinner positions in this draft. So you lock up Maddox as well as Blacklock. I mean, just getting. Uh, in defensive interior penetration, no big deal. Uh, it does suck that you miss out on probably a, a day one left tackle starter in this draft, which I think there are a handful of them. Uh, and, and also, this is a deep wide receiver cornerback class, so you can get a decent fast simile uh, with three picks uh, in the second and third rounds. So I, I think overall, if this did happen, I would be okay. Uh, but of course, I mean, it's draft season, so everyone has an opinion. Uh, so nitpicking, I probably would have gone in a different direction. But again, uh, respect to Lance and respect to what he does. But are your thoughts, your reaction to our reaction? Let us know in the old comment section below. Subscribe for Daily Vikings Takes. You know what to do. Skull, production value.